Hello and welcome to the seventh artist talk in our series here at Yukon Artists at Work in Whitehorse, Yukon. It's August 20th, 2020 and I'm Leslie Leong and I'd like to acknowledge we're on the traditional territory of the Tagish Kwan people where the Tan Kwachan Council and the Kwan Mundan First Nation govern. I thank them for sharing this land with us. I'd also like to thank the Yukon Arts Fund for supporting the Artists in the Window series and Music Yukon for making it possible to host an additional four artists mm -hmm. and for making our programming better with their music. Today, we're here with Chelsea Ravensdale. Here we go, I'm gonna show you her. There we go. Um, she's our artist in the window this week at Yukon Artists at Work and Chelsea is a sculptural artists primarily working in miniature and stone and antler. To give us, to give our listeners a sense of your work, Chelsea, um, describe maybe that piece that you had a photo of with the wolf in the forest, because I particularly like that one. <laughs> and it's got excellent composition, so. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, uh, that was, what, what would you like, what would you, what would you like to, hear about it well what's it made of how big is it okay it uh is made of caribou antler and it was about i think it was about two and a half inches by three and a half or four inches tall um and maybe an inch thick altogether or a bit less um and that was one i, I worked on over a period of time oh. um just whenever i could like how long uh I think I worked on it over the course of a year or so. I was mostly engaged with my young son. So just whatever, I would grab half an hour or an hour here and there. And uh, and then I finished it this past spring or early, late winter, I should say. And uh, yeah, I, re I really enjoyed um, doing that one. It was the first time I made a carving quite like that, just uh, like doing a, a small scenery into a, into a piece of antler. Oh. I'd done a bigger one of that in the past, a few years ago, um, like into a piece of antler, a piece of scenery, but it just hadn't occurred to me to, to make a small one like that. And so I think, I think I'll do more. Yeah, you like doing that one. Yeah. 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 It turned out really beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so a little bit about process, like you had mentioned, that you're finishing pieces that you've worked on for a long time. So just tell, is that part of your process or? or you uh, know, no, it's, you? it's more just in the moment. Once, uh, once I got pregnant and had my little boy, uh, everything kind of froze. Oh, okay, so <laughs> but you usually to work more continually on a piece and finish yeah. or? Okay, yeah, so it's yeah. Yeah, a little different now. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. Actually, I was kind of interested in, you know, asking you about, you know, life changes because you have a two-year-old son. And has that changed your inspiration and your practice in general? Uh, yeah, yeah, both. Okay. I, I find, uh, um, oh, it's hard to explain really, but like practice in general, for sure. Like I'll just kind of try to condense <laughs> more into short period, into nap time or whatever. <laughs> and, uh, um, and conceptually, Things have changed a lot too, and, and ideas. Um, I I haven't really thought of how to put it into words, but noticing, um, I don't know. I'd hesitate to say more of a maturity, but there could be. I yeah. think hopefully, even just innately, being a coming a parent, taking on a big responsibility, hopefully, brings some maturity with it. Uh, and I find I'm having more involved ideas and bigger scale ideas. Oh. And uh, like there's some things that I will probably work on more over time. Okay. And I wasn't having ideas like that as much before. It was more just smaller like projects in the moment. So I'm, oh, I see this in here. I'm just go do it and mm -hmm. then on to the next one. And Actually, that's another question that I was kind of interested in. Um, generally, you work in miniature carving so far um what inspired your creative sense of small scale i guess is what 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 inspired that original um, i think it's, it's just sort of how i started working i had uh when i very first was introduced to carving 
um, a roommate had moved out and he was a carver and he left me a little box of little pieces of soapstone oh. and, a, and a little dental pick. So I just started <laughs> working away on, uh, on these little pieces of stone and then, um, and so I think I just generally had small pieces of material and when I went traveling for a while I started carving into wooden chopsticks and oh, <laughs> stuff really? like that just oh, something wow. as a little pastime and then yeah. um and then when I decided to begin carving again because I only ever really dabbled for a while uh but when I decided to actually pursue it and set up a little carving space for myself and my place uh it was a small space also and I was carving over an outtake fan to so oh. I wasn't breathing the dust and having dust fly all over so I had a small uh, opening for the outtake fan, so everything was just all right over the spot. It was it was convenient, yeah, yeah. and uh, and I seem just I think I'm just drawn to detail. I keep see, seeing little things here and there, and and sometimes even if I've started trying to do something with less detail, I keep finding all the little stuff, and I just wind up putting it in anyway. Yeah, yeah. And so this is interesting, you, so you got into carving because you had a carver in your household. Yeah. Yeah. So um, how did that come about? Like, cause lots of people would have a carver as in their household and not do that. So what, what prompted you to? Um, I'd always been interested in carving. Okay. Uh, my parents had a childhood memory story that they passed on where I, they used to wake up to me crying early in the morning because I was trying to carve the soap <laughs> in oh, the bathroom. Oh. And I, d I don't remember that, but, wow. but I grew up with that story and, and it always <laughs> stuck with me as something, oh, you know, maybe that's, I'd like to try that. I always wanted to try it, but I also felt uh, as, a, as a young person growing up, kind of felt intimidated mm. by it. And, and there was nobody within um, our social circle that that did carving so I, I hadn't explored it I, I explored painting and clay and pottery I was always uh, was active in those things but so once I had the opportunity I like I was really intrigued my roommate being a carver oh asking questions and stuff and so that's I think that's why he he left me those things when he left oh nice yeah nice. yeah and subject matter how do you decide what subject matter is in your pieces um i think my mind is is geared towards natural like the natural world mm. i'm usually doing like plants animals trees sometimes like char characters or character faces um but uh those are more like cartoonish they're not i don't really like for faces and stuff is uh, I'm really been doing serious faces. They're usually kind of wonk, wonky or making Although a funny the expression. Although musician is beautiful. There. Although the musician, yeah, that was that's probably the only one that I've done that hasn't been making a funny face. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah fun. that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. He's playing instruments, so that's, that's fun. True. Yeah. Well, describe this new piece here. It's a little bit. It's bigger than. Um, yeah, yeah um, that one started. That one was actually part of a bigger carving that I was trying hard to get that I had started a couple, three years ago or something. And I was trying to, to finish it for this series, but being an older piece of antler, um, and there was lots of sort of funky spots in there. Part of the scenery, because there was, there was a waterfall coming down here, mm. um, part of the, the bank here, I went in too deep and hit the punky spot that I was having a really hard time tying into the rest of the mm. picture. And if, if I, I could have put it to the side and worked on it over time and made it all come together, but because I was pushing it, uh, I just wasn't happy with how it was coming together dimensionally, mm. like the dimensions weren't matching. So um, I decided because I put so much <laughs> effort into it and I wanted to have something done for, <laughs> for this <laughs> display and I didn't have time to do anything else. So I just cut the top off because that's where most of that's where most of the detail was and and the other pieces I can finish later and and so I just started sort of finishing the bear he's uh, a little bit more work to do on it I'll finish today but um, but uh, it looks yeah. great yeah it doesn't yeah, yeah it looks
That's great. <laughs> I love the trees too. Super. I really yeah. enjoy doing the trees. <laughs> yeah. Oh, why? Um, I don't know. It's just I enjoy doing them. I enjoy just working on the leaves and finding new insights of how to how to do the leaves, how to get them like mm -hmm. if they're all blowing in the wind mm -hmm. or spacing them apart more, just working on the whole tree thing in general. Water too, I, I like doing water. Mm. I haven't done the knit. It's, that's more of a new exploration, but I enjoy, uh, um, yeah, I enjoy doing water too. Mm. And a little bit about, uh, what about materials? How do you decide on what material you're gonna carve? And therefore, of course, what tools you use? Uh, um, um, in the last few years, I've, I've, I've received quite a few antlers, so I've been doing antler carvings more, and some ivory. So, whenever it's kind of whatever catches my eye in the moment, and I'm interested in stone too. I like, um, I'd like to get more into doing things by hand again, which kind of draws me more towards clay because I don't have because I'm not really using soapstone. Mm. Um, though I do so have you some. Use... So right now I'm using power tools, okay. but it would be nice. I'd like to, I'd like to start doing more without uh, power tools right. again. Why is that? It, it's it's more peaceful mm. and quiet. I right. I enjoyed just when I first started carving, and I would just just sit there and whittle away for a while. And I mean, you can have you can have conversations with people while you're working. Right. You can do it. yeah, <laughs> and with the power tools and either earphones and the mm. fan and the huh yeah, right. <laughs> and yeah and it's and lots of vibration and so like it's really versatile and you can do things more quickly yeah um so they're they're great tools but i'd like to and i'd like to explore their avenues as well okay and um materials so are they mostly local yeah yeah, mostly yeah. local. And, um, well, then you mentioned ivory. So can you explain that? Ah, uh, well, that would be, well, those probably not right local to like my place of residence, but it's all Northern. It's I think mostly from further North. So what kind know. of ivory? The mammoth ivory. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah and yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Unusual for Northern <laughs> Canada. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's yeah. right. <laughs> so yeah, and, and they come out of the, um, Dawson area as well mining, right yeah. yeah and I'm not sure if I have any from there but I might it's hard oh, okay. to, it's hard to okay. hard to save I know the pieces I had from before came from further north yeah okay oh interesting yeah and so you were working on this larger piece um kind of so it's kind of like relief carving on the antler um what inspired you to work larger because yeah normally you work small like I you have that one picture of the ra the raven, which is beautiful, um, and you show a twenty five cent piece beside it because it gives you a sense of how small. But now you're going larger, so explain what inspired you to go larger and why. And um, just where. curiosity and mm -hmm. and seeing, um, and and interest. I mean, you can find stuff and like see pictures and bigger things too and see pictures and small things and just it's also the challenge of I mean it's obviously going to take longer doing something bigger and sometimes that's intimidating because I like to just often just get something done but um uh so it's a good it's a good challenge too like to because it can take hours and hours and I, and I like the I like the challenge for the patience factor I like developing my patients. <laughs> Actually, that's something, that's something I'm particularly interested in. And so... Well, kids do that too, don't, that's, don't they? <laughs> that, that's right. Yeah. And so that's that's extra encouragement there. That it's like, okay, I want to... Yeah, I want to be good with that. <laughs> yeah. um, so how did you... How have you found it that it's different than working really small? Um, like, it must be quite different. It, it is in a sense oh, how I'm doing it so far I'm just working small as a all over the place like I'm just okay. expanding it differently but there are uh, there have been moments 
too, or because it's bigger. One of the challenges I found actually is just trying to step out of, I, I need to step out of so small. Some mm -hmm. of the time, like I'm just gets like almost like too obsessive into mm -hmm. the things like, okay, this is, is too, too much. And it would, it would uh, be better to just sort of let go of, some of the super small stuff, it would just be better for a bigger picture. Like, uh, and so that's, those are just things I've been, I've been exploring. Uh, sometimes just getting a longer stroke in there too mm -hmm. is uh, like, that's just a, sort of a minor example, but the biggest challenge I've found is, yeah, just too much detail and, mm -hmm. uh, and working away from that. Just so you have a nicer, something nicer to look at and, and, and it's not too overwhelming. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, it's so much bigger and all that detail, although that's kind of fun though too. I mean, yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah, it, it could be. So it's, yeah, it's a big, so those are all possibilities yeah. for the future. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and so, and how do you work? Like, so does, do you see things in a piece? Like, cause they're odd shapes, your materials in a lot of cases, especially antler. Like, so, so do you see something in it first or do you just go, okay, I want to make a something. And then you just go and you make that something like, I usually see, I, I like to just look at something and see, that's what I particularly like about rocks actually. Oh, rocks. And the okay. stones is, uh, is because, there's so like there's just so natural shape of things you can just like oh there there it is yeah kind of like looking at clouds that, yeah absolutely <laughs> okay. and uh and and although the same thing can happen with a piece of antler and a piece of ivory because they have their own patterns and things too and you see things in there um and uh so yeah so it, it does go both and, and sometimes well, like say with this butterfly, it's a piece of, of leg bone and I had cut it in half. So I was just looking at like, what can I do with this half? And then it's like, oh, well, there's this, the butterfly. And, uh, and yeah, so there's, yeah. Yeah. And um, do you like draw on the material first or do you just go in and start? No, I just go in and start. Wow. Yeah. Some, sometimes if I'm trying to get a shape right after and I'm seeing I'm just like it's not quite right and I'll look and I'll grab a pencil and I'll kind of play around with where I think the angle might be or or something like that just to so I don't lose it if I'm not seeing the, the line clearly because right. often the line is I just see it right there in the piece so it's easy to follow but if it's not there and sometimes I'll, I'll take a pencil and just make it quick that, but otherwise it, yeah. yeah that must be really hard because like once you cut into something like it's a done deal yeah but there's always I find there's just <laughs> always a way and sometimes if it breaks it's like oh that was meant to break because look now that's <laughs> way better <laughs> and and so that's something I really enjoy about so you're obviously uh, very actually, adaptable yeah to the situation yeah you seem to be able to adapt whatever well, that's really fascinating. Well, thank you for that. Um, mm. Anything else that you would like to mm. share with us? Not offhand, no. <laughs> we don't have any guests, so we don't have any other questions. Yeah. But thank you for being with us, Chelsea. Mm, thank you. And we will post this online. And I just wanted to say also that um, you can see more of Chelsea's work at Yukon Artists at Work Gallery at 4129. Fourth Avenue and Whitehorse, and she has a Facebook page um, at Ravensdale Art or yeah. Chelsea Carving. Yeah, um, and you, your work will be featured in the min window here at Yukon Artists at Work until Monday, August twenty fifth. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. And Chelsea will be demonstrating in you, the window here today, Friday and um yeah so come on down and enjoy her work and come and see it any time in the gallery thank you